Hey, how's it going guys? Today we're going to do a new video about the CB500X from Honda and today we're going to talk about the windshield. We're going to be comparing the stock windshield with an extended one which is from uh, the brand Puig. I don't really know how it's supposed to be pronounced, Puig. It's, uh, it's a Spanish brand and from what I can tell it's about 10 centimeters taller so it should be much better than the stock windshield in terms of uh, wind noise and turbulence and buffeting. So before I did have an extension here that was plugged onto the stock windshield and it wasn't great. The problem was that there is a big metal piece in the middle uh, that really prevents you from seeing anything. It's kind of dangerous and it also adds to the turbulence. So on one hand you do have an extension, that's the point of the extension, that reduces the wind but this big metal piece also re-adds some turbulence. So overall it's a little better than the stock windshield when it's on its own but it's still not great. So in this video I will show you how to take this one apart, how to put the new one in its stead and then I'm going to just compare the noise levels using the microphones while riding so that we can compare the stock windshield to the extended one and also the stock windshield with the crappy extension that I had previously. Let's go! So to begin with what we're going to do is that we're going to unscrew the stock windshield and for that you only need one hex key which is the number five, five millimeters. At some point it comes to a point So you got to be careful because you have some uh, plastic washer here. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, you have a plastic washer with the screw, so be sure that you're not going to lose that. It's kind of important to keep it there and it all comes out. So the second step is to remove these inserts, which are made of uh, rubber and plastic. So you just slide them down and get them. So you have four of them and Puig just provides you with other inserts that are compatible with the new windshield. Then the third step is to prepare the plate here to receive the new windshield and for that, for this you need these four parts as indicated in the little manual that they give. So it goes like this, you have first this one and then you put the washer on the other side of the plate. Then you have the screw that you're going to be able to screw to the first uh, nut. And then you have this thing, which is rubber that goes on top of it. And you have to do this four times, one for each hole. So a little trick is that you can actually assemble this, these three parts, uh, before you put them on the plate because you could slide it in position so it makes it a lot easier to install. So the fourth step is going to be to install the windshield. So there it is. This is upside down. This is right side up. It's a, it's a nice piece of plexiglass. Uh, it doesn't have any openings here, unlike the uh, stock one. Uh, we'll see how it performs. Uh, usually the opening here is meant to reduce the pressure difference between before the bubble, before the windshield and behind. And usually the purpose of these holes is to uh, reduce the buffeting. But we'll see how much this affects the performance and how this one performs as it is. So what I recommend to do for this uh, step is to prepare 
the thing. So you have the, the rubber insert here, you put it at the bottom, so behind the shield, this is going to protect it from being scratched by the screw that we just put in. Then you have a plastic washer uh, on the, the screw, so you just push it in so that it kind of holds, and then you do this with all four before you proceed to install the windshield on the bike, and it's going to be much easier to do. Okay, so once you have put all four screws uh, into the plexiglass, you have to just line it up and using an M3 hex, uh, hex key, you can start screwing it in. Okay, just approach it, don't actually tighten it because you're going to need to adjust everything. Uh, this is uh, this is a bit of a mistake that I just made just before because I I screwed the the big screws in and I just tightened them and uh, clearly here it's it's not quite aligned so you have some play so maybe it's going to work out we'll see but uh, as a general rule of thumb when you put a screw in don't tighten it just leave it a little loose see here it can still move I attach this one and this one it can still move around so that I can freely adjust all the parts so that they all fit together uh, all nice and uh, and square and then when you're sure that everything is lined up properly you will be able to uh, to screw everything in and tighten it up so here for example we have a little bit of a of a misalignment so what we can do to fix that is to unscrew a little bit or untighten I should say these ones which is obviously less convenient when the windshield is in so that we can wiggle it around until we can find a proper alignment Now I think it's aligned properly, so I can just proceed to tighten them again, which is again not super convenient because the windshield is on, but at least we're sure that it's aligned properly. Otherwise, it's just going to stress the piece of plexiglass constantly and uh, it's going to make it age a little faster and it's going to be more susceptible to breaking and fatigue because with the vibrations, it's going to be wiggling a lot and if it's pre-constrained uh, it's just going to make it worse so it's better to have something that is aligned properly without too much stress because it's going to be vibrating quite a lot especially when you ride off-road so i just tightened the screws that are beneath and now i just need to uh, tighten the screws that are on top so it compresses a little bit the the padding underneath the rubber padding uh, it's very important that we make sure that it's not too tight because these are here one to protect the plexiglass and two To absorb some of the vibrations that you're gonna have So if it's too tight the vibrations are not really going to be damped at all. So just squeeze it a little bit but not too hard and uh, always remember to tighten everything all the bolts in a cross pattern so that you prevent it from being warped too much Okay, and there is one very last step is uh, to put these little plastic covers that are just going to be here to uh, protect the screws from all the incoming insects and water and whatever else, dust. So this is optional, but I think I'm just going to, I'm going to put them on. It's relatively easy to pop afterwards if you need to. Um, and it's just going to protect it from dust and water and everything. So that's good. And here we go, it's finally mounted.
So here it is, the new extended windshield from Puig. If we compare this with the original one, it's about, it's about the width of my hand. So it's between eight and 10 centimeters taller, uh, but it looks much nicer than having the screen that we had with the bike from the factory, plus the clip-on thing, which looked ugly. And as I said, was not that great at reducing buffeting. It did help a little bit, but not that much as you will be able to tell with the extract that we have here. I haven't tested this one yet because it's the first time I installed it on the bike. So I'm just gonna go around for a ride and uh, I'll bring you along with me and then I'll be able to give you a conclusion on that. Let's go. So here's some footage of me riding the bike. The two microphones are placed within my helmet with the visor closed. The microphones are set close to my mouth at about two to three centimeters. I've tried to be scientific here, so uh, I'm using a plugin from FabFilter that measures the loudness of the sound that has been recorded. Now I've tried to keep the gain constant, as constant as possible while doing the recording. Uh, but the third recording didn't have quite the same gain, so I've tried to adjust it based on the loudness of my voice because there's a part where I talk in the clip. However, from the waveform, we could see that it was saturating while recording, so this tends to make things louder, so it's not necessarily the best of comparisons for the third clip. So in the plugin, you have three meters that you should look at at the very right. You have the integrated meter. This is the widest one that tells you the overall loudness of the clip from the beginning of the recording up to the moment at which you see it. Uh, the second meter is the instantaneous one. So it will show the peaks in loudness. And the last one is a short term average, which will take into account the momentarily louder parts without them being peaks. And it's interesting to look at all three because the integrated one is going to rise slowly but doesn't really move after that but uh, as the speed changes as i take corners and as i ride in straight lines uh, the momentary and short term meters will give you an indication of how much it varies with speed So when we look at the values that the plugin calculates, we could see that with the stock windshield from Honda, we have a loudness between minus 21 to minus 14 decibels, uh, and this is mostly dependent on speed. In the case of the stock windshield with the extension, we have a range between minus 20 to minus 13 decibels in loudness. And for the new extended windshield, we have more dynamic range with a loudness that goes from negative 26 to negative 12 decibels. And we can see that when the speed drops below 60 kilometers an hour, the loudness is greatly reduced. Uh, and the loudness that was measured at top speed of around 110 kilometers an hour was slightly higher than uh, the old windshield with the extension that we could clip on, uh, but this is probably due to the fact that the recording technique wasn't perfect and that the signal was clipping, so this tends to modify the loudness. As a quick conclusion, we can see that the quiet parts are much, much more quiet with the new windshield, and the louder parts are about as loud as with the previous windshield and the transition seems to be between 60 and 70 kilometers an hour. So that's very good news when you're riding at low speeds and at higher speeds it doesn't really change much in terms of loudness, at least from what we can measure here, but the sound it makes is much more pleasing to the ear. Now let's just hear what old me has to say about it. So my impression so far is that it's uh, really, really nice. It's much more quiet than the regular uh, windshield that Honda provides with the bike out of the factory. And uh, it is definitely better than the extension that I had previously, the one that you can clip on. Um, and look at this view. Look at this visibility. It's very nice. It's 
very clean as well so that helps it's very nice you could see everything uh, whether you're tucked in like this or maybe sitting taller like that uh, it's really really nice it offers great protection uh, it doesn't seem to be vibrating that much when you touch it uh, this is thanks to the rubber pads that you could see here and here uh, these ones really absorb the vibrations and prevent this thing from vibrating too much it's really really stable it actually vibrates less than the mirrors here so so far I'm really content with this one let's hear what it does at uh, higher speeds so when you compare the noise at high speeds at highway speeds that I just did here um, with this windshield it's just more of a rumbling noise that is more constant so it's much easier to get accustomed to it and it's much less annoying that the more varying noise that you get the buffeting noise that you get with the previous extension that I had on top of the stock windshield so all in all it's really a win-win uh, because you see better and there is less turbulence less buffeting so that's just way better obviously the cost is multiplied by four uh, the thing that I had before costed about 25 euros I think it was one of the cheapest ones available on uh, Amazon and this one I got for about 80 euros uh, delivery included so it's actually not that expensive I think for a whole piece of plexiglass it's definitely an investment that you're gonna want to make if you're riding a lot on highways or for commuting or just like I'm doing right now on uh, country roads it's just much much more relaxing you don't have that much noise it's it's just nice uh, so overall I like this product I recommend it totally I'm not sponsored by them I just chose one that looked to look to do the job uh, that was compatible with this bike and uh, as you could see I managed to mount it in 10 minutes uh, it's very very easy you only need two tools two three tools uh, some hex keys and a, and a clamp a pair of pliers so uh, all in all very good product totally recommend it so that's it for the video uh, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, don't forget to subscribe and like it so uh, you could get more videos like this in your feed and you will get a notification every time I post something new. Until then, see you on the roads. Bye.